Hey, welcome back. Good to see you survive chapter one. So now we're here, we are just going to talk about chapter two. Um, chapter two, I think, is probably one of the more pivotal ro um, chapters that we do. Everything, what we're going to talk about in this chapter is going to basically be in almost every other chapter that we're going to be talking about. And it's going to be a large portion of, or I should say, it's going to play a large portion um, of the role in your AP exam. Um, because it's all going to talk about how we compare data. And today we're going to start talking about transforming data initially. So, um, normally at this point you've taken the chapter one test, so we start talking about, well, let's take a look at the, t the exam scores and go from there. So here is a sample of 20 test scores. We have scores from 61 up to 99. Um, and then we made a dot plot, put out all the information, the mean, minimum, five number summary, standard deviation, all of that. Now here we say BIF score to 65. What is BIF's percentile? Now what is a percentile? A percentile is um, the percent of value strictly less than or equal to a value. So um, back, back in the day, SA, or PSAT scores used to be by percentiles. Um, so you would say if you had a percentile of 80%, that means that your score beat or met 80% of the people who took the score. Another place where you can use it is this. Let me transition quick. Is here. And this is just a percentage. These are percentiles for um, toddlers and infants' birth and weight. So for example, if you had, let's say if your baby was nine months old and was 75 centimeters long, you would say, oh, wait, they are at the, let's see, what is that, the second line about? Third line? So they would be at the 90th percentile for height. Um, and you could do the same thing for weight down here. So, you know, their weight over here, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's say they weighed... 16 pounds, and so then you'd be like, okay, and they were only, you know, three months old, and you'd be like, dang, you know, that's, well, it's still less 90th percentile, that's not bad. Um, so it'd be that type of thing, and so you'll see this at doctor's offices quite a bit. So just so that you haven't been totally, you know, something totally different. So anyway, that's what percentiles do. It kind of gives a nice number in terms of this is where, if we lined everybody up, this is where that score falls. So BIF is at 65. What's BIF's percentile? Well, okay, at 65, we have 1, 2, 3. 3 out of the 20 scores are at 65 or less. So because so 65 or less, so because of that, then we would say is the decimals 0.15, and so we would say call that the 15th percentile. That means BIF did better than or met the scores of 15% of his class. So, oh, hey, look at that. Now, was Biff above or below the mean? Okay, well, the mean is at 80. How many standard, how many points, how many standard deviations? Okay, so for that, Biff was 15 points below the mean. And then let's see, for standard deviations, what you do is you're going to take this. So when you're talking about standard deviations, our standard deviations in this case have our 10 points. So we're going to break that 15 up into groups of 10. Breaking things up into groups is just division. So 15 divided by 10. And we're going to say negative 15 because he was below the mean. And we're going to say do, 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 negative 1.5. So Biff was... 1.5 standard deviations. What direction? Uh, you want a D there, Mr. Hayes. Below the mean. Okay, notice I don't put a negative on here because we are gonna say below or above depending upon what we've got. Okay, Marty scored an 88. What was Marty's percentile? Ooh. Where's 88? So you can go here. I can either count all of them, so that'd be right here, or I could also say, well, I've got one, two, three, four numbers above him, so that'd give me 16 numbers that he met or went lower than. So we're going to say 16 over 20, so 0 0.80, so he is at the 80th percentile. Was Marty above or below the mean? Oh, let me scoot up here a little bit, sorry. Still learning that. 
Was Marty above or below the mean by how many points, how many standard deviations? Okay, so Marty was. So what was the mean? We had a mean of 80 again, right? Marty was eight points above the mean. And again, eight divided by 10. This again, that's the, our standard deviation is 10. So we want to make that the number that we've got. So then we would say Marty was 0 0.8 standard deviations. Now again, Mr. Hayes, it seems like you're writing incomplete sentences. My English teacher would be quite impressed. And that's actually what a lot, a lot of stats is. Because remember, we always talked about context. You're not just going to say 0.8 standard deviations. You're not going to say negative 1.5 standard deviations. You need to put it in the context of the problem that we're talking about. If nothing else, it makes you sound really, really intelligent. Just saying. Um, all right, so. Um, bu -bu -bum -bum -bum. The z-score is defined. Uh -huh. Right here, this is, if you have a highlighter, and Mr. Hayes did not bring one down, you deserve better. I'm just saying. Um, this is going to be where, this is the big thing. Okay, So, it's defined as the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. Hey, we just did that. Okay, Again, my graphics didn't come through on my printer. High quality there. So, z equals, and you're going to take your value minus your mean divided by standard deviation. This is what we spend a lot of time talking about. Know it, love it, commit it to memory. So as an example here, Goldie scored 98 on the chapter one test. Find and interpret the z-score. So what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna say, okay, our z-score is, and yes, I do put a little line through my z's. Don't judge me. Divide by 10. From there, we're going to do the subtraction. So I get 18. And yes, order of operations matters. If you don't do it, then you're going to end up with like a score of 90. Actually, you get 90 exactly, and that's just crazy talk. <clears throat> so you get 1.8. 1.8 what? Goldie's test score. Which test? Chapter 1 test. is now remember we don't just say the z score what is z score actually measuring number of standard deviations is 1.8 standard deviations which direction well it's positive so we're going to say above the mean and i didn't move my paper up but you could still see it anyway does anybody know what goldie was going to do for a job Check to see who else is in this class. Maybe that'll help. Couple things. So anyway, so going back off of this, right? What was, what would we say Biff's Z-score was? Biff's Z-score was a negative 1.5. What is Marty's Z-score? Marty's Z-score was 0 0.8. Okay. So a thing to remember down here, I'll write it down here. So above, above the mean means positive z-score. Make sure we're still there. Yep, okay. Below the mean means negative z-score. Anything else? By the way, Goldie was going to be the mayor. And if you're not sure about that, go ask your mom and dad about Biff, Marty, and Goldie and see if they know where that came from. All right. Now, I did, I, f I filled out part of this just to say, for the sake of time. 
Now, again, I would have you guys go through and do this normally. Okay. Um, primarily just because it's a good exercise. All right, there are two mathematical operations, including the calculating out a z-score. And why I have a graphic there, I don't know. My apologies. So first we take each score. So what do we do first? The first thing that we did back here, when we're doing z-score, what do we do first? We subtract. Okay, so we subtract off the mean. Oh, you know what I bet you that was? I bet you it was z equals value minus mean over standard deviation. I got to really work on that shadow. Things to aspire to. Anyway, so what we're going to end up doing is remember we took off the mean, which in this case was 80. So we took each of these scores, and we subtracted 80 off. So I did that for you because I'm that kind of teacher and because you're not we're not physically in a classroom right now. And we got negative 19, negative 15, blah, blah, blah. Notice the 80s are zero and up here. So you can already tell for just from this which ones are going to be below the which ones are below the mean, which ones above the mean. Anything that's below the mean is negative. Anything that's above the mean is positive. Anything that is the mean is zero. Now here's the fun part. If we go through, here's the dot plot. I probably should have hid this one. I'm sorry. But if we make the dot, this is the original dot plot for the score. Here's the dot plot for the score minus the mean. So I just, I changed the scale on it, but notice I still have 60 to 100 is 40, negative 20 to 20 is 40. What's true about those two? You're right. What are the things that we talk about? We talk about shape, right? What's the shape? What's the difference between the shape? Shape is the same. Let me change my light angle here. That's really annoying. Hey, that's better. The center. Where's the center? The center here is 80. Where's the center here? So shifted down 80. Shifted. What's your variability? What's your range here? The range on the top. So check the range. So you have 99 minus 61 is equal to 38. 19 minus 19, or 19 minus a negative 19 is 38. It's the same. So when you subtract a value from all the different pieces. The shape stays the same. The center shifts. How far does the center, sh ugh, center shift down? What's your new mean, by the way, then? If this is my mean here, what's the new mean of the transformed data? Hmm. It went down 80, right? So what was my mean? The mean was 80, so my new mean is zero. So, shape stays the same, center shifts down, variability stays the same. Now, secondly, what we end up doing then, remember in terms of doing this, coming back here, value minus mean is equal to divided by standard deviation, is that we divide by the standard deviation. So I went through and I did those new scores there. And I divided each one through by 10. So 19, negative 19 became negative 1.9, negative 2 became negative 0 0.28, 0 0.98, et cetera. So your dot plot, so again, this should be score minus your mean divided by standard deviation. Notice here what's going on. So there's my new dot plot. How does this compare to the original? Shape, same. Now here, actually compare this to this. So what happens? Zero is here, right? So same. Variability, what happened? So before I had a range of 19 minus negative 19 to get me 38, 
Now I've got a range of 1.9 minus a negative 1.9, and I get 3.8. So it's decreased. In fact, it's divided through by 10. Now, here, by the way, it says same. It, you actually divided through by 10 because 0 divided by 10 is 0. Think about if we had divided these scores by 10 initially, 80 would have become 8. And so just like what we had here would be a factor of 10. Okay, quick summary, and then we'll be done with the experience part. All right, you're given a list of data, and you add or subtract the same value from each value. What happens? The shape stays the same. What happens to your center? It moves, it either adds to it or it goes up or down. And your variability also stays the same. If you're given a list of data and multiply or divide by the same value B, what happens? Your shape is going to stay the same. Okay, your center, you're going to either multiply or divide by B. Variability, you multiply or divide by B. So what happens here? So the zero, the chapter one test scores have a mean of do, 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 80 and a standard deviation of 10, right? The Z scores, because that's what we did, we took all of these pieces of data and we subtracted it all and divided it out. So these are my Z scores right here. What's your mean Z score? Have a mean score of zero. What's your standard deviation going to be? What's 10 to, what, we're dividing everything through by 10, so since 80's gone down to zero, 10 is going to go down to 10 as well. It can be one, okay? And that's always going to be the case. For standardized scores. For do, 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 do. standardized, what does that mean? Distributions. What does standardized mean? If you standardized everything, standardized tests, think about it. We'll talk about it on the flip side. See you in a few.